Hey guys, Egg from Mark here, and today I'm making this video to talk about something well, a little bit different. Usually, when I talk about video games, I would talk about gaming news that I find interesting. That is something news that's happening in the industry that I find kind of interesting and I want to talk about. Like when I talk about PlayStation 4.5, or I'll talk about specific game that I find interesting, or like when I did my retrospective look on Plinto of Persia 2008, which has been like eight years ago. And but today, however, I, I, I'll be taking a look at video game mechanic and specifically a, a combat mechanic that is, is used in so many modern action games. And I know that sounds really niche, but it is something I constantly see in new action game. And I constantly see a lot of developers using this mechanic wrong, in the wrong way. And and it, it is kind of bad to feel that way. But like this combat system can be used in a lot of good way but I feel like a lot of people miss the mark on that and gamer there are a lot of gamers who enjoy this type of combat system so much that they aren't willing to step out of their comfort zone and try something new and so I think that's kind of a, also a problem as well so what's the combat mechanic system that I'm talking about here you may ask um, I'm glad you asked that um, well today I'm going to talk about the Arkham combat So Arkham Combat is a combat system popularized in Batman Arkham series of games started with Batman Arkham Asylum to Arkham City to Arkham Origin to Arkham Knight. All of those games use the combat system. Um, now most of you probably know that the Arkham series is a very successful franchise. In fact, Arkham Knight, the latest installment of the Arkham franchise and probably the last installment, um, has reported to have sold better than the game Game of the Year, Game of the Year of last year, Game of the Year, of the Game of War, last year, The Witcher Three, and that's kind of crazy to think about, you know, that like Arkham Knight, a game that has possibly have the highest amount of controversy, controversy last year, to have had that much success, you know, from the disgustingly awful PC port that we all know about, that is still. Is not being properly addressed until this day. The PC part of this game is still broken. Uh, the expensive season pass, uh, the overemphasis on slow car tank combat that a lot of gamers feel really out of place in in a Batman game, and the underwhelming short DLC that this game had. So it's really quite surprising to see this game doing so much better than Witcher Three, and it's only kind of hard to wrap your mind around the fact that this game sell better than the game of the year of last year. Um, so it's clear that this franchise is quite successful and when ga video game franchise becomes successful, you know something weird always gonna happen next. More video game developers gonna start implementing something that is that they see in a successful game into their own game. And honestly, that is actually a good thing in my opinion. Um, it's kind of awesome that because you're not copying, right? You're taking what worked and put your spin on it. You still work on making it in a way you want to present it in your game. So it's definitely got not copying mechanic purely just out of other game. And video game borrow, borrow each other game mechanic all the time and it makes sense. But the problems start arising when you don't know why something works. But you're implementing it anyway because well it worked for that game and it worked for that game. And that game sell good and that game sell well. Um, it's, so it will probably work for us right? Well, probably not. It is much more important to identify how certain game design mechanic and system work before implementing it into any game. Think of it this way. Why is Call of Duty multiplayer so successful? If you think it's because Call of Duty is a military shooter with cool gun, you're probably only half right, you know. And the other half is also a very important part as well. And it is the part that makes the game so much fun and so much engaging to a lot of people. The mechanic of the game and the design go into the same direction for Call of Duty multiplayer. And that worked because the game is a Twitch-based, fast-paced shooter game that is fun to play. It consistently has progression system to keep people playing the game. The game is consistently rewarding player for your action, whether it's a hit marker that show up when you, when you hit a player, even though you might not kill him, um, or the point you get for taking out other player or using a kill streak. Um, 
Call of Duty also don't take a lot of time to play. It's a good game to abnegate your time into uh, all game that you can play in 5 or 10 minutes. So military shooter is not exactly the only part that's why the Call of Duty multiplayer work. Uh, it's the design philosophy of consistently rewarding the player for every action that they do with, with the system and the mechanic that layer on top of that uh, to make you feel even more rewarded and that that as it called is why Call of Duty work you know you think about the unlock token you see in in Black Ops games where you get this token where you can unlock anything in the game that you have uh, have access to at that point the supply drop system that was introduced in Black Ops 3 where you can open this chest thing and it's also the free to play mechanic well not free to play I mean uh, pay to win mechanic a lot of people like to call it pay to win um, but it actually is this microtransaction. Um, the leveling system that the game have in since like Modern Warfare 1 um, and the kill streak system that is popularized in, in Modern Warfare. Um, the create a class system that they keep refining so that you can have like pick 10, pick 13 and stuff like that. And the score within the game for killing people, for, for jumping over stuff, for for doing pretty much anything. and. These are examples of reward that you see in Call of Duty that keep offering to people to keep them playing and engaged in the, the, the game. And that's the heart of the design of Call of Duty multiplayer and that's why it works. Now, if you don't understand that and you try to implement something like Call of Duty and try to make a multiplayer shooter, military shooter game, it might work on some extent, but you need to understand why Call of Duty work in terms of rewarding players as well. And that's why Call of Duty is such a successful franchise. Um, now let's come back to the Arkham franchise, where a similar thing happened. The Arkham combat was used using is a combat where you use two main button presses, well implemented, which is the core of the combat system. With one button doing all the attack and the another button using for counter. Now there's more to it than that, like stunning enemy or dodging an attack or a combination of all these four movements. But what's important is all of these were implemented to create a free flow combat system where Batman can move from one guy to the next and keeping his combo going, countering enemy when they're trying to attack, using gadget to help, taking out enemy based on their threat to the situation you're finding yourself in. It's also a good pre uh, good way to present Batman fighting style where you see him in comics and stuff doing and his character through the fighting system as well. So this type of free flow two button focus attack countering Arkham combat work great for Batman but why does it not work for other game? Let's look at some example of some game that you use Arkham combat system that they see in, in Batman Arkham series and using it in, in their own game and see where it kind of went wrong for some game and where it kind of went right on some game. So let's look at those games specifically starting off with Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. So why did Shadow of Mordor work with the Arkham combat? Well first off uh, they use the Arkham combat and that fit within the tones of the Middle Earth lore. And they try to incorporate that into the theme of the game. So when you put something that is mechanically different like that into the, a world that fit that type of theme, then that kind of stuff kind of works. But if you don't do that, it kind of feel jarring because what you're doing on screen in combat might not fit within the world of of, of the the game. So like in in Batman, Batman would use hand to hand combat. But in Middle Earth, you'll be using things like sword, uh, bow and arrow, and and a da throwable dagger, um, and they kind of make that fit within the world. And you also have cool ability as well um, that that fit within the the, the law of the universe of of the Middle Earth. Um, it also fit the design of the game really well. Similar to Batman, Shadow Mordor is a power fantasy type game. You know, a game that focuses on giving player a sense of sense of controls and and having incredible power that they don't obviously have in real life um so it's that type of power fantasy game that make people feel like they they can escape and see you know have have, have game that they feel more powerful than they are 
these are games like Batman, like Assassin's Creed, like Shadow Mordor. So, and when the game f- main focus is to to make player interaction feel awesome and badass, this combat system really excel at doing that. So that's another thing that they did right. Um, the enemy in this game also adapt to the combat with the nemesis system that they integrate within the game, where you would be fighting different like rank of Uruk, who ha who are basically Og. But but they have different st- strength and weakness and skill that change the way you tackle the combat of the game when you fight different Uruk from different rank f- with different abilities. So they not only use the Arkham combat, but they also integrate something new as well. Um, the uh, uh, superpower type ability also makes sense because your main character Tyrion is banished from that um, and stuck with a nameless raid soldier that. You eventually found out his name um, later on, but th- the the soul that you get things stuck with, he have this ability that you can use in combat. So story kind of makes sense because your main character, something happened with your main character, and he's then b- banished from that. Um, he's basically not allowed to die, basically, um, and so he's stuck with this soul, and th- that's why he have those ability, and that's why those ability makes sense. Um, this game also excels because it used Batman Arkham Combat only as a guideline and then it implement more things that add so much more to the combat like the bow and arrow ability where you can slow down time and aim and shoot at the mini on the head to kill them instantly or shoot them on the leg to make them stuck on the ground for example. Um, ability to instantly do a shadow strike at enemy from a really long distance. You just press uh, one button if you have the upgrade available. Um, you would be transported right at the enemy or you can use throwable dagger doing the combat to stun an enemy or taking out weaker enemy um, it also have incredible animation quality and visual fa- feedback to your action which is really important in Arkham combat game we will be seeing more game where I'm talking about where they don't have as good of an animation and when you don't have good animation and feedback to the player and the game doesn't run at high frame rate or something like that for example um, then, then the immersion kind of break down. The Arkham combat stop working because you you don't feel that what you're pressing and the the interaction between character is is what you meant for it to be. And I feel like that's the case with almost every every action combat system. But it's really apparent in in Arkham combat. Um, overall, Shadow model work because Monolith Studio, the developer of this game look at Arkham Combat and figure out how the combat work and they take things that work in a middle earth game and and then they start adding more depth into the combat which I did with the nemesis system that they introduced and special ability you have at your disposal throughout the game and that's why Shadow of Mordor work um, so now that we talk about game that work how about game that doesn't work at all um, we talk about Shadow Model and now it's time to talk about Out of Shadow, specifically Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Out of Shadow. And it pa- might possibly be the worst example of, of game that use Arkham system combat type thing. Um, the game have really bad controls. It has poor visual response in terms of low frame rate and, and bad animation. The game is poorly optimized, so the game run really bad, and the graphic doesn't look that good. Um, the combat also lack any kind of depth. You just attack, and you really time the counter, and the counter is really hard to time. Um, your character have abilities, but they are either useless or too clunky to pull off reliably in in the game. And to add more insult to injury is that this game is designed for four player. Co-op, which is there's nothing wrong with it. I think it would be cool to have combat system with multiple player with the Arkham combat game, and I think it's a good idea at first. But to add more into injury is that this game is designed for four player co-op, but the online co-op doesn't work anymore. In fact, it barely worked when the game came out, and after a while, it just stopped working because well, it's Activision who's the publisher of this game, and they just don't care. And I think the developer also left the game as well at that state and they don't care so this game is just bad game in general so it the combat is bad the gameplay is bad the business thing behind the game the support that uh, the game is given is also bad so it's just a horrible game 
but so so that's an example of game with with bad Arkham combat. But that is mainly because the game is bad in in the first place. So let's look at look at a game that have also have bad combat from a franchise that is kind of big and huge and, and successful. And what I'm talking about is Assassin's Creed Unity. Assassin's Creed Unity is the latest, no, it's the second latest installment of the Assassin's Creed main franchise. I know this Assassin's Creed Chronicle, but that doesn't count. Um, Assassin's Creed Unity, you also kind of use uh, Arkham Combat. I mean, a lot of Assassin's Creed games kind of use this combat where you all you're doing is attack until the enemy tries to attack you and you counter and you instantly kill them. And that is not necessarily like an Arkham Combat, but it is kind of like it. But the difference is that it is all emphasis on countering. So if you spam countering, you can take out most enemy in, in like Assassin's Creed Black Flag or Assassin's Creed 3. In Unity, they change it a little bit and I don't think it's for the better. Um, you can counter like in Arkham Combat, but the, the game run at really poor frame rate. Like people know about this game is notorious for having bad frame rate and poorly optimized. Um, the game has bad animation, bad camera angle, so you don't know what's going on, where the enemy is coming from, who you're supposed to counter, and and like whether you attack register or not. The animation is alright in some cases, and it's bad in some cases. So it's kind of mixed, and the game is really glitchy, and sometimes they would just drop input and stuff like that. So this game is a game that kind of is using the Assassin's Creed combat, that is kind of like Arkham combat, but not really. Um, where there's more emphasis on counter, and they they try to apply to Batman combat, and it just doesn't really work really well because it it just doesn't because the frame rate is so bad and the animation is so bad, and the game is overall kind of bad. But I do enjoy the stealth part of this game. This game have a lot of problem. People hated it. Um, I do enjoy the stealth and the traversal into like assassin mission for example you can go into multiple direction um that is really cool but the combat is doesn't just doesn't seem to be fun and interesting at all um okay so maybe assassin Creed unity and teenage mutant ninja turtle out of shadow might be an easy target since both of them are fairly bad game in general and we all kind of have to agree on that because there's some mechanic that seems really fundamentally wrong with this game or the fact that these two games are really poorly optimized and poorly developed. Um, now let's talk about game that would be considered good but have a combat, Arkham combat type thing that is not that is not good. Um, the game I'm talking about is Hands of Fate. Um, Hands of Fate is a really cool card bot game where you uh, ha- collect gear and you use it. It's a really cool and unique game. It's a really unique game. Um, there's very few games like it. I can't think of any because I don't usually play this type of game. Um, so for me, it's a really one of a kind game that I get to experience. Um, so in this game, the, ah, it's so hard to explain. The, the You have a player and then you have like a dungeon master guy who is like a, the dealer. So he would deal card on the board and you would move your character from card to card to card and in different card there would be different storyline um, so you open the card and there would be text on the card where oh this happened or that happened and you have a choice in like it's like it's like a dungeon game dungeon and dragon game I, I believe that's what people call them I never played them myself um, where you get to have a choice and then then it is random number and you can choose one and if you get lucky you might be successful and if you not it might be fail but the cool part of this game is you can collect gear collect item use resources to do a lot of cool stuff um but there's also combat within the game so if you land on a land on a card that read like oh you have to fight this guy or there's a you you got into some trouble or something like that you would be fighting against an enemy and the combat is probably the worst part of this game but this is a really great game by the way um, it used a lot of cool stuff, it have a lot of cool ideas but the combat, they use Arkham combat but they don't advance it in any way so your focus is on attack and countering and that's kind of it you do have ability based on the gear that you collect and you press 
right bumper or left bumper or some stuff like that to use it but usually it doesn't do much and like it some of them might like freeze enemies some of them might slow enemy down but it doesn't do that much and it doesn't change the game drastically and all you really want to do is countering the enemy and attacking them and dodge them around so the combat is really basic and really mundane i feel like it doesn't doesn't explore the, the the capability of the Arkham combat at all it just took it and used it and it worked all right within the game because i know their main focus is to like, create this dungeon type world where you can have so many cards and so many cool stuff happen but i think that game the sequel is also coming out hand of it too um i hope they fix some of those issues because the combat is probably the weakest part of the game um the the next game i'm talk about let's talk about a game that is kind of have mixed feelings with people um and this game this last two game is not a game that per se using uh an, an arkham combat some may say it is some may say it isn't but for me i think it's inspired in some way from arkham combat so i kind of want to talk about it. um or, or i feel like this game is also going to be beneficial of using more mechanic from arkham combat so so the game i'm talking about here is remember me um remember me is a game no one remember um <laughs> it's a game developed by uh, the studio that brought to you uh, life is strange and 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 published by capcom it's a it's a really cool game it's an action type game action i don't know action adventure type game where you 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 like there's a storyline about memories and other stuff i don't want to spoil too much um but let's talk about the combat okay. the combat is kind of interesting because it used like the akam system but then it used like combo system so you would press x x y x y x or something like that and you could choose those combination to use in in what they call a sensor system um which is like a memory system type thing because this game is based on memories and information and data and and our memory in the future where people can take your memory or something like that. So you can choose your combos and, and have different combination of combos. But what really cool is you have to fight based on the, the beat of the music and the, 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 the so you have to time your, your hit basically. But the problem that comes with this game is that it takes a lot of stuff from Batman where you can dodge enemy, you can like use ability to stun enemy or stuff like that but at the end of the day there is no counter button for this game so what result is that it uses a lot of cool stuff you have a lot of cool attacks but the enemy consistently can't attack you and you have no way of countering them but dodging so what what come as a result in the game is that a weird combat where you have to consistently attack because that's the way you're gonna regenerate health that's the way you're gonna you're gonna uh cool down your abilities um you have also have to consistently dodge the enemy attack so so you, the enemy will attack you with dodge and you have to keep dodging because the enemy you consistently attack and you need to keep doing your combo while dodging the enemy and that become really difficult because when there's multiple enemy on the screen all of them are gonna try to attack you so you have to dodge do one two attack dodge one two attack dodge one two three attack maybe four if you're lucky and then you dodge and that kind of ruined the game for me i like the game a lot i like the theme i like the the combat on some level with the music beat and the combo all that i can choose for my own but the 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 way where i have to consistently dodge and there's no way for countering enemy that hindered the game a lot and i feel like this game took a lot from 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 Arkham Combat and other game combat as well but it would benefit much more for having a countering button so this is an example of game that could benefit more if they take more from Arkham Combat I feel like um, another game that kind of I think use Arkham Combat as, as a guideline but then do it in their own completely different way is is One Finger Dead Punch um, One Finger Dead Punch is not an Arkham Combat game at all, but it used the two button presses like attack and countering, and use that idea and go wild with it. So this game is based on like a 2D plane where you play as a stickman dude who who attack 
who use Kung Fu power to attack enemy from light or ref. So what you have to worry about is pressing the, the, the right side of the screen or the left side of the screen. Um, whether if you play on the mouse it would be left mouse or right mouse or, or on, on the controller the two, two, two right button X and B I believe. Um, that's all you have to worry about. So it's very similar to, to Ar the core of Arkham Combat. So if you like this game, explore the core of what makes Arkham Combat so great and put it into their own game. And that's awesome because when you, like I said, when you want to use a combat or system that exists in the game, you have to understand why the system works good. And this game understands why the system works. And Silver Dollar Game, the developer of this game, is probably one of the worst developers of all time. I feel like they make so many shit games, like awful game that is just not good and they come out of nowhere and make this game and it's incredible and it surprised everyone um so yeah i feel like if you were to make a combat system or to explore any kind of system and mechanic i feel like this game did that this game look at arkham combat see what is at the core of the game and took that and like put that into the design of their own little game that would be like fun for, for a lot of people and that worked really well and I feel like that's what you have to do these days if you're an indie developer who don't have a lot of budget you have to look at mechanic like a core mechanic because your game can't have too many features because that costs too much and if you look at the core of what makes something work and you understand that and you can implement that into your own game then you can make it work and that's an example of another game that, that used Arkham Combat as an inspiration, but not necessarily how they do things. And so I feel like those are some examples that I want to talk about when we when really talk about uh, the, the example of games that use Arkham Combat, or the game that use it right, the game that use it wrong, the game that um, in, uh, inspire from it, and the game that would benefit from using more of it. So yeah, that's my video on, on Arkham Combat in general. Um, I think it's really cool and interesting combat and it is being overly used right now in modern action game and I feel like a lot of people don't know why they're using it so maybe they should explore more on, on why this combat work and how they can improve it like the developer of uh, Monolith uh, did with Middle Earth Shadow Model and 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 how they, they took that to the most fundamental level and go from there and added their own spin on it um, so yeah, that's my video on Arkham Combat. If you find it interesting, always leave a like. That always help me. Uh, do comment below of other games you find that, or oh, use Arkham Combat, or or might use it wrong, or might use it right, or game that you feel that like would benefit from using this combat, or the game that is you feel like inspired by by the combat that they they see in Arkham game. So yeah, that's my video on Batman Arkham. Uh, combat. Thank you for watching and see you guys later.